Alrighty, sounds good. So I'd like to thank you for joining me. I love your magic, and so I'm excited to have you on. Thanks for having me, Timothy. And so for the first part, can you please explain a little bit about yourself and who you are? Yeah, so my name is Taylor Hughes. I am a magician and storyteller, and I'm just obsessed with wonder. And so I try to make projects and do shows that help people remember we don't have it all figured out. Oh, Timothy, I lost your mic again. Check one, two. There you are. There we go. Okay. Uh, so in your recent, uh, when did you realize you want uh, wanted to become a magician? So I was seven years old when I saw my first magic show. We had a family friend who was a stand-up comedian, and my mom thought, "Hey, what if I ask, uh, what if I ask our friend Lance to do a show for Taylor's birthday?" And he's like, I can't do stand-up comedy for seven-year-olds. <laughs> and so he put together a little magic show, and I've just been hooked ever since. So that that's when I decided, when I was seven is when I decided that's what I wanted to do. That's awesome. So in, in your recent book, since you're also an author, um, in yeah. your recent book, you talk about misdirection in your everyday life and manipulation. Can you please explain a little bit about that topic and everything? Yeah, so this book that I just put out is called Misdirection, A Magician's Guide to Spotting and Avoiding Manipulation in Your Life. And basically what, what the whole premise of the book is, is I've spent my entire life studying how to trick people for fun, but then I've seen how the same techniques that we use as magicians to entertain have snuck into every other aspect of our life, from how we treat each other in business to family to politics and all of that. And so uh, it's a fun book about some serious topics where I teach a simple trick, and then I talk about how that specific method has kind of snuck into what happens when you go to buy a car or when we're on social media and how people can uh, take advantage of one another. And so it's just a book to try to help people ask more questions and to avoid having some negative stuff happen. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm hoping to get it for my birthday soon. So, uh, Oh my goodness. When is your birthday? Uh, May 28th. Okay. Well, uh, have your folks send me or you send me a, an address and I'll put one in the mail for you. I'd love oh, to send you one. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, you could save your wish list for something else. <laughs> uh, and so uh, what made you want to write books? Since you're, since you're a magician, what made you also want to write a book? Uh, two yeah. books, actually. Oh, yeah. So I um, like seven years ago, we were driving home from a, a party with some friends. And my wife looks at me and she goes, why don't you do that on stage? And I said, what are you talking about? She's like, when we hang out with friends, we, we all tell stories and we feel like we were able to connect through like our shared experiences and even through experiences that we, we haven't had, but we can learn from someone else's. And so she's like, you're always telling stories, but you don't do it on stage. So I started telling stories on stage seven years ago and it changed everything. Um, and then I got to a point where I was like, hey, I, I would love to like write these stories down in a book. So that folks who maybe, you know, I don't get to see in person or we're not in the same place at the same time, uh, we can kind of share the stories that way. So that's how the first book came about. That's awesome. And so uh, in your shows, like you said, you tell stories that go along with your tricks. What is the process of turning a story into a trick? Oh, that's a really good question. So years ago, I used to just be excited about like, a magic trick and i know you do some you know magic tricks as well and it can be so exciting like oh i really want to i want to do this trick where this ball floats or this thing you know disappears and so i i used to always just go what trick do i want to do and then i'd come i'd get the trick or i'd work on the routine and then i go oh what am, what am i going to say while i'm doing this you know how do i entertain and engage the audience and then I started switching it around to where now I don't ever think of the trick first. Now I always go, what is it that I want to say? What's the story I want to share? And then what trick will justify, you know, me, me telling that story. And so I have a list on my phone constantly of like stories that I haven't written yet. Just like moments, like we all have these moments throughout our day or our week that go, oh, that's an interesting thing. And then I'll just start by writing out that story and going, where does it lead? Um, yeah, so I do it like I do a trick. I put out a trick for magicians with a Rubik's Cube. And that whole thing came about because, number one, I didn't like Rubik's Cube magic because it's usually, look, at, look, this guy can solve a thing and I can't do it and I feel silly. And so I thought, well, wouldn't it be cool if the, if the cube was, you couldn't touch it. And then I, you know, it was in a bottle. So I was like, oh, great, you can't touch it. And then I thought, well, 
wouldn't it be even cooler if the audience could solve it so it matched that one and um and that whole that whole routine came because i wanted to say this line that um uh, about how you know life isn't a puzzle to be solved it's a mystery to be enjoyed and so i thought well how could i talk about that well what if i use a puzzle i use a rubik's cube so I always start with what is the story I want to tell and then kind of work my way backwards from that. That's great. And so uh, what are some of your favorite tricks that you have performed on stage? Oh, my goodness. So um, I'm doing right now I'm on tour and I'm doing a totally new show than than is on either of the specials. I have a special on Amazon. Uh, you mentioned these. Thank you for sharing that. But I had a special on Amazon called Chasing Wonder and I have a different show on YouTube called Enjoy the Ride. Uh, my favorite tricks from the first show from Chasing Wonder are probably the Houdini handcuff trick. Um, I've been doing that trick since I was 14 years old. And so that was one of my favorites. That one in the Rubik's Cube I just mentioned. And then on the last special, my favorite tricks were the vanishing stool. Um, and then also the uh, I do a trick where um, uh, I, I give away a copy of my book and then I had pre-written somebody's name, like everything that was going to happen on stage was re pre-written in the book. So that's, that's my other favorite one from the, but I'm always trying to think of like, there's always something new to work on. So like right now, if, uh, if anyone comes to see the show on the road, it's going to be different than that stuff, which is fun. Yeah. I think for me, my favorite tricks that you've done are, are like the invisible stool. And I think one of them's of mice and men is a trick. Oh yeah. That's one of your tricks that you do in one of your specials. That's, that's a classic. Yeah. And then I also like, uh, it, I think what happened was you had a book and they tore a page. Uh, it was like a torn page. Oh, yes. That was yeah, a really yeah. cool one. Yeah. Yeah, that's a fun one. I thought about kind of bringing that back because it's been it's been a while since I've done that trick. And it's really it's fun. It's a fun trick to do. Yeah, I think one for storytelling that was really good was uh, it's something that like, I don't know what the title is, but like you have all these puzzle pieces and you put them in and there's no room for one square and then you make right. room for one square. That's like a classic storytelling trick. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, and, like, and, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I don't mind. No, I was going to say, so that's a perfect example of, of how you infuse story and magic is I had seen that trick forever. And what happened is somebody invented a version of that trick and they had this great bit about, you know, life, like the puzzle of life. And it was this beautiful, bit and then everybody who bought that trick said the same thing that that person said and it just didn't fit because it was like that's not their that's not their experience specifically you know and so um i i was really talking a lot about wonder and trying to find a place for wonder and that's where that trick came from i went like oh that's cool it's a trick where you have a puzzle and you, there's an extra piece and how do you fit it in and so that's yeah yeah, that's uh, that was that one. That was crazy. That video went insane online. I've never had a video go crazy like that. Um, and I think I've seen that trick actually be done with chocolate too. Like, yeah, you could have done that buy, trick with chocolate. Yeah, you can buy like a chocolate bar that's cut up into those pieces, which is really fun. And the hard thing about it that is, uh, when I tried making it, I tried making one before I saw your specials. Yeah, I couldn't get the exact measurement, so the square would never fit no matter what. It's like you have to get perfect measurements to do right. this trick for it to fit yeah there's a builder in florida who made that puzzle for me and he is so smart with figuring out i'm not smart enough to figure out the math of all that <laughs> so do you come up with your own tricks so like do you like use others and give permission or how does that work yeah so in magic there's there's performers then there's performers who create and then there's creators who don't perform so um, uh, my buddy Blake Voigt is a brilliant performer, but he also creates magic for other people. And so like he invented the stool trick that I do and, uh, and I, uh, got the rights from him to do that. Um, and then like, I, I came up with the Rubik's cube and the jar thing. And then I let other people do that, you know, give them permission to do that. And so, uh, it, it's kind of a weird thing in magic where there's, um, uh, when it comes to your stories and what you say during the show, you know, that all needs to be unique and personal, but it's also cool that there's all of these like uh, routines that people create and props that they make that'll achieve the illusion of something impossible happening. And so you kind of have a nice little base to start with. So I always take, uh, I usually take something from an old book or something that I've seen 
uh, that's available that someone does that they make available and then try to figure out what the unique perspective is on that. That's awesome. And so if you had any advice for your 15 year old self, what would you tell him? Oh my goodness. Um, there's a thing that my wife and I say all the time now that, um, it took me forever to learn and it's that you should take what you do seriously, but don't take yourself too seriously. And I think, uh, I think when I was 15, I, I took what I did seriously. Like I played guitar and I did magic and there was things that I was passionate about, but I'd be so like nervous about sharing it with anybody or talking to anybody about it. Or like, I, I, I was taking myself too seriously. And, um, and yeah, so I would just, I would just say that take what you do seriously. Don't take yourself too seriously. Just that's enjoy, great. enjoy the whole process. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And so this next question actually ties into this uh, last one. Um, if you had any advice for other students who wanted to become magicians, what would you tell them? Yeah, I would say just watch a ton of magic. Like see what, see what you like. Uh, magic tricks are interesting. Uh, I think the same would be said of like performers that are trying to figure out a song that they want to perform. Um, you have to try them on and see what fits you and what feels right. And uh, I would just not be afraid to try a bunch of different stuff. You know, I used to do a really serious magic act before I realized I, I, I was more of a funny guy, you know, and I used to do my wife and I used to perform big stage illusions before I realized like, Oh, I kind of like storytelling more than big props. So I think, um, yeah, I think you just give it a go. Don't be afraid to try stuff and see, you know, be, be okay with like looking silly. <laughs> yeah, and I want to say the the problem with like using big props is like travel too. If you're touring a show, oh yeah, it's hard to like move props around like the song a woman and have like that's a huge trick, and yeah. touring that is also like very hard to do. Yeah, I, I was at a show last night, a friend show in uh, locally here in California, and, and there was two different illusionist acts, and they were amazing, but they had these huge props. And, and I, it, it, was, um, it was wild because they were doing the same amount of time as my buddy who was like working out of a suitcase, you know? So I think you just have to figure out what it is that you want to do and also where are you going to do it. And if you got to get on airplanes to get there, you just got to get creative on how to make it all fit. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. Is there anything else you would like to tell the viewers before I end the recording? Well, I have a question for you, if it's okay. Mm -hmm. I, I told you I, lo I love your backdrop there, and our family loves musical theater. What is your – do you have a favorite musical that you've seen? That I've seen? Uh, probably Come From Away. Oh, cool. We haven't yeah. seen that one yet. It's on Apple TV. It's really good, yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. It, it, All right, we're gonna it's it, based on a true story way. about a small town in Canada – uh okay. Ganda and on 9 11 uh 38 planes were stranded there and it went oh, from wow. a population of like eleven thousand to like 20 something thousand wow yeah and it's all one act so it just like goes by i'm actually i saw it once in january and i'm seeing it again on wednesday oh that's awesome yeah so. i'm jealous <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, that wraps up the interview. And so uh, I'm going to end the recording and I'm going to talk to you about like logistics with hosting and everything. But yeah. Cool. Sounds good.